Right now, I'm challenging myself to see if I can make 128 Regulation H teams that are each different from one another over the course of 128 days. Why 128, you might ask? At the end of the 128 days, we're gonna do something special where we battle every team against each other in a single elimination bracket to see which team emerges on top. There will be some competitively strong teams, there will be some gimmick teams, and there will be some probably a good number of goofs and gaffs in there, so if you want to follow through to the end, subscribe so that you can keep up with each day. But without further ado, let's move on to day 70. Alright everybody, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we are doing the Touching Grass team. After the last team, we definitely need this team right here in order to balance it out. If I mean, I feel like I don't need to explain myself any further than that. So starting off the Touching Grass team here, we have Leafeon, and Leafeon is a nice Pokemon just because it's one of those chlorophyll grass types and it's fairly speedy, so you don't need the chlorophyll on Leafeon to be speedy, it just helps you outspeed pretty much everything and helps you keep up with other Pokemon in Tailwind. As well as on Leafeon, Leafeon is one of the evolutions that is better as a physical attacker, and we're going to be rocking Solar Blade since we're going to be setting up Sun with our Chlorophyll. Makes sense to be using Solar Blade because it is a 125 base power attack that will instantly charge whenever the sunlight is up. So hopefully with Leafeon we can get a lot of damage off very quickly. We also have the knockoff for getting rid of the opponent items on Leafeon and also to give Leafeon a little bit of type coverage. And we also have the Sword Stance to further boost our damage that we're doing with Leafeon. And Protect is mostly just to save ourselves in case there's like a fake out since we're using Focus Sash so we really don't want to be getting hit by some stray priority moves and then just getting one tapped by a random Pokemon because this Leafeon doesn't have any real HP investment. And also to help us dodge fake out specifically, we have the Terra Ghost on Leafeon to well, dodge all normal type attacks, but fake out is the biggest one. Next up, we got our Sunsetter, who is going to be Torkoal. And this Torkoal isn't super designed to be a Trick Room Torkoal. Like, you should min speed all of your Torkoals, basically, so that you can keep up with other Torkoals. But our Torkoal is going to be a Heat Wave Torkoal, just to deal some consistent fire type damage, hopefully, whenever we have our Sun activated by our Drought ability. But we also have the Body Press, since we don't have any other forms of fighting type damage on this team, except. I would change this team to add fighting type damage to Pseudo Wudo since I've played some games using this team now, but the body press on Torkoal is nice for dealing with steel types mostly because nothing on this team super deals with steel types other than Torkoal. But then to also help ourselves out a little bit, we have the Yawn, which can create some openings where we lead like Leafeon and Torkoal, and we protect with Leafeon, and then we Yawn into an opposing Pokemon, and that will cause them to fall asleep, so we can either uh, have them proc the Sash on Leafeon, if there's only like one attacker and one statuser, or a Pokemon that wants to attack into Torkoal, then that Pokemon will fall asleep, and then we can hopefully start sleep sweeping with Leafeon. And then to boost our damage a little bit on the Torkoal, we have the Life Orb, just to get that 1.3 times boost, the cost of a tenth of our health every time we use an attacking move, and we have the Dragon Terra type just because Dragon gives us a lot of good resistances. Next up, we got Alolan Exeggutor out here enjoying the sun. Alolan Exeggutor is a harvest Pokemon, which means that whenever the sun is up, we will guaranteed get our berry back at the end of the turn as long as we've eaten our berry already, which means that we would have an open slot for berry to be eaten. I'm explaining the harvest ability way too complicated here. Basically, we, we eat our berry, if sun is up, we get a 100% chance to get our berry back again so that we can, we can eat it again and then it's just like an infinite cycle. But if the sun is not up, it's just a 50% chance. But onto Exeggutor's actual moves, it's pretty simple, we're just using Dragon Pulse and Energy Ball as our two stab damage options. And we also have the Sludge Bomb to perhaps counter some fairy types that Exeggutor really does not want to see. And there's a lot of moves that you could put on Exeggutor, and Sludge Bomb is nice for dealing with fairy types, but you could also put on Flamethrower if you wanted to be able to deal with Steel types a little bit. As I mentioned before, this team kind of struggles to deal with Steel types. But the Sludge Bomb also goes with our Terra Poison, and Poison is a really good Terra type for Exeggutor. And we have the first option for our Trick Room here on the Alolan Exeggutor, since a lot of Pokemon on this team are slower, especially the Torkoal, it makes sense to be running Trick Room here. Up next, we got Pseudo Wudo, a fake grass type Pokemon who's actually a rock type. And Pseudo Wudo is also really slow, so it at least has that going for it. And its attack stat allows it to hit decently hard with its rock slide. And we also have the Sucker Punch to try and pick off some Pokemon just in case we either had Trick Room up and we brought our opposing Pokemon super low. We can pick them up with Sucker Punch if Trick Room gets run out. 
And then the third move that I decided to put on Pseudo Wudu was Stomping Tantrum, just because it's a ground type move, which allows us to, again, deal with steel types a little bit more, but I think Body Press might be better on Pseudo Wudu, and then just putting some defensive investment into Pseudo Wudu might yield some more benefits, but it's also a Pseudo Wudu, and I think that there are better Pokemon than Pseudo Wudu, it's just Pseudo Wudu kind of feels a little niche role on this team, where everything's already super slow, and generally when you have a Rock type, it's gonna be super slow and super frail, aka Rem Pardos. But on our pseudo Wudo, we're at least sturdy, so whenever we are setting up the Trick Room, we could opt to go for an attack if we think that only one attack is going to go into pseudo Wudo, and then we get off two Rock Slides into the opponent, and if the two Rock Slides are too coming, and maybe it brings it low enough to where we can pick off a Pokemon with a wrong route, then pseudo Wudo is in like a pretty good spot. And then so we're not getting our attack lowered on the pseudo Wudo, we have the Clear Amulet to block Intimidates, and we're Terra Flying mostly so that we can dodge ground type moves. In the next slot here we have Florges, and Florges is a support here for our grass type mons as Florges has the ability Flower Veil which will negate the stats being lowered or status inflicted onto our grass type Pokemon which only covers Exeggutor and Leafeon but it only really needs to cover Exeggutor and Leafeon as Pseudowoodo has the Clam so it doesn't care about the stat drops and Aranguru and Torkoal especially don't care about stat drops. It would be nice if we could negate statuses on these two but these two being status definitely isn't the end of the world because only sleep really affects them and if there's a sleeping Pokemon on the field, then we could probably use Leafy on our Executor to just ignore that in order to position ourselves a little bit better. But our Florges is rocking three special attacks in the Alluring Voice to maybe negate Pokemon from trying to get set up in front of Florges. And the Psychic is here, but I didn't end up using the Psychic very much in testing. I'm not quite sure what I would swap it out for on Florges. And we have the Pollen Puff for side healing up our own Pokemon, maybe to side Pollen Puff Pseudo Wudo twice and then get it back into its sturdy or we could just side Pollen Puff into like Exeggutor or Torkoal in order to keep them alive for a bit longer. And we can Terra Grass our own Florges just in case we need to dodge a status, but more often than not when you are Terra Grassing your own Florges, it's because the powder moves are going to put you to sleep, so the Flower Veil doesn't really affect Florges that much. And lastly on Florges, we just have the Helping Hand just in case we need to get a little bit of a damage bump on one of our Pokemon to take out an opposing Pokemon. We're also Cover Cloak just to avoid Fake Outs mostly, but all secondary effects are nice to avoid since we can get like Rock Slide flinched or something like that. We can negate it with Cover Cloak. And last on the team, we decide to slot on a Aranguru because it's got a little Palm Fan thing. It, it's kind of like grass. Also, Florges is here because Florges is literally a flower. But for our Aranguru, it's going to be our second Trick Room setter, and we are inner focus on Aranguru, so even if they lead Fake Out Mons, we can still get up Trick Room super consistently, and we have the Mental Herb in order to avoid the opposing Pokemon maybe going for a Taunt into Aranguru, or an Encore whenever a Trick Room is already been set up. We also have our own Taunt in order to stop opposing Pokemon from going for status moves, and the Shy Shock is just some nice stab damage to do into opponents, maybe to chip them for a little bit, and the Protect to maybe just save Aranguru for a turn is also very nice, and Rotera Water on a Ranguru mostly because we want to be dodging like neutral fire type heavy damage like eruption or something like that. But yeah, that's the basic gist of the team. Let's get into some battles. Alright, so first up we have what looks to be like a mostly dragon type team. Like it seems like they have a Nihilip here and the Ursuline just because those are both really strong pieces. But the amount of pressure that they are exerting on us from Dragapult, Garchomp, Dragonite, and Kamo is like a lot. So the game starts out, they immediately lead Dragapult and Ursaluna as we get Aranguru and Sudowoodo in, and they immediately tear a dragon their Dragapult, and I protected with Aranguru because I thought they would double the Aranguru since they don't want Trick Room going up. But they actually went for the Dragon Darts here, which Sudowoodo does live, but they also went for the Hyper Voice, which if I had spread that damage between Aranguru and Sudowoodo, I think Aranguru would have definitely taken it and we could have gotten up Trick Room on this turn, which is too bad. Uh, also, the Dragon Police is Terra Dragon here, so we Aranguru gets double darts, but it lives on 1%, which is actually super clutch, and the Alluring Voice is able to pick up KO into Dragapult, but I don't think that crit mattered, and we take the Blood Moon, uh, even at plus 1, from the Ursuline on Florges, so now Florges is in a better spot, but Florges is kind of fast because it's not really meant to be in Trick Room, so Ursuline gets to KO here, and now it is up to Exeggutor, who just one-shots Ursuline, which I was honestly not expecting, and we get some shots 
try shock damage into the Kamo. As Kamo reveal it, that it's probably a body press set, which is good for our Terra Poison here. Kamo protects again, and we Dragon Pulse into Garchomp, and that just flat out takes out Garchomp, which is also super sweet. We, we try to taunt into Kamo to keep it from building the defense boost, but Dragon Pulse is enough to bring Kamo to 2%, and we should have Shy Shocked in order to finish off the Kamo there, because now we're outside of Trick Room, but because we have two Pokemon left in the Kamo... Uh, if it did have Clanging Scales, it should have gone for it, but I don't think Clanging Scales would have taken out Exeggutor there, so we just get to use both of our attacks to hit Kamo there. Uh, next we have a Rain Team, but they probably have the side proc Colossal strategy, as they have the Smeargle, and Smeargle whenever it's here, usually when they have a Smeargle with a Colossal, it means that they want to side proc the Colossal with like Surging Strikes or Aqua Jet or something like that. So the game starts out and I lead Leafeon and Aranguru because I either want to get a Trick Room to counter the Colossal or I want to set up Sun and I decide to set up Sun with Leafeon so that way Leafeon is faster than Colossal and they do in fact go for the Aqua Jet here and we get Solar Blade damage into Colossal but it's not to Koen Colossal which... I wish it was to Koen Colossal, but it's not. And they bring in Pelipper here, which definitely was a play that I was not expecting, as they power gem into Torkoal here in order to just take out Torkoal, and Leafeon is stuck going for the Solar Blade here, as they swap Pelipper back out, and they swap Smirgle back in, and Flamethrower brings Leafeon back down to Sash, and we do get off the Solar Blade, but it doesn't do much damage at all. Now the Colossal is Terra Grass. is just going to protect for this one turn. I don't remember why I decided to protect on this turn. I think it was because I knew Leafeon was going to go down here to the Aqua Jet. And now we have Sudowoodo who gets the Rock Slide into both. And Psyshock does good damage to Colossal, but not enough to KO it. And we don't flinch either slot here. And Terrible Ass is just going to be able to bring Sudowoodo down to its 1%. We protect Sudowoodo here because I knew the Ice Shard would come out into Sudowoodo. And we burn a turn with Orangaroo while Orangaroo is asleep. And we Sucker Punch Smeargle so that way they can't Ice Shard into Sudowoodo to take out Smeargle. And Psyshock means that we get to take out the Colossal here. But now the opponent just gets to bring in Pelipper and our Caledon. And we don't really have a way through our Caledon on now that we have lost our Torkoal so easily and they get to Electro Shot into a Rangaru. So we do get up Trick Room here and we try to Stomping Tantrum into our Caledon but it's just not doing enough damage into our Caledon as we would need to crit it on the next turn but they just decide to Electro Shot into a Rangaru and Weather Ball is going to pick up KO into Sudowoodo. So my gambit that I was kind of thinking about was the Rock Slide into Pelipper and then hope that we get the flinch on our Caledon, but if we get the flinch on our Caledon with Rock Slide, even though that would be a good thing, it would also be reducing the damage that we deal with our Stomping Tantrum, and the game is pretty much over at this point, so it, it kind of benefits us to try and play to the opponent messing up by going for, like, Wide Guard and then maybe our Caledon using the Electro Shot into a wrong route to take it out and then we could use the rock slide spam to try and get out the rest of the game but i mean there's not really a way for us to beat our caledon as i said before so i think in this game i definitely should have played better by using a wrong route to try and set up the trick room instead of just flat out going for the sun mode right away as the sun mode was more easily countered by the fact that they have pelipper Whereas the Trick Room would be a little bit more difficult for them because we could use like the Torkoal and our slower pieces a little bit more effectively. Here we have an opposing Sun team where they have the Hisuian Typhlosion just to deal a lot of their fire type damage, but they also have the Volcarona who you usually don't see on Sun teams, you normally just see it on balanced teams. And this is almost a balanced team, but they need a water type, but they have like their Dragon Breaker, which is Dragon Pole, and Sneezler is always just a really strong piece. So they start with Real Boom and Sneasler, and we start with Leafeon and Sudowoodo, mostly because I thought they were going to start with Tisui and Typhlosion, and seeing these two in the front isn't great, but it's also not terrible. Uh, we're forced to double protect on this turn one, because we don't want to get faked out by anything, and of course Real Boom throws out the fake out as the close combat comes out into Sudowoodo here, and now we swap in Torkoal to hopefully take a grass type or fighting type attack, since Torkoal's got a lot of physical defense, and we try getting Solar Blade into Sneasler, but Sneasler protects, and the Wood Hammer ends up just going into Torkoal, but now Torkoal's in a pretty good spot, because it can start spamming out Heat Waves, as we protect with Leafeon, because we don't want the Real Boom to be U-turning out on it, as they 
they just went for high horsepower into Torkoal, but we get a heat wave into both slots. And we do crit the Sneasler, but the Sneasler is Sash, which doesn't really change much because Sneasler is still super frail. Sneasler is going to protect again as I tried to go for a Solar Blade into it in order to take it out. As the Reliboon takes the high horsepower again, and we live on 2%, but the heat wave from uh lands on our the real boom but the life orb is going to take out our torkoal and now they get to bring volcarona but we get to bring back in sudomuno and the volcarona rage powders but leafeon is able to ignore the rage powder and i thought there was a chance that they might bring in the dragon bolt here since we were previously solar blading but sudomuno just gets to rock slide into the volcarona and they reveal their terra here in order to not be weak to our dark type moves but we get to knock off their choice band so now their dragon darts isn't going to be doing very much damage since it's just 250 base power attacks and they do reveal Feel Terra Blast and they Terra Blast into Pseudo Wudo, but we get to knock off into Dragapult. And Dragapult uh, can drag and darts into the Leafy Yawn, but they would have to like Terra Blast into Florges at this point to take out Florges. So since we have both of our Mons left on the field, we are able to take out the Dragapult pretty easily. This is a game where the opponent has like a pretty good spread of Mons. Like they have all Hisuian Pokemon except for the two Fire and Ghost types from Paldea being Skeleturge and Saraledge, which I'm not really sure why both of them are here. But the battle starts out, we lead Orangaru and Sudwudo, and the opponent leads Sarah Ledge and Decidueye, as they just decide to Bitterblade into Orangaru, and they leave Blade into Sudowudo, which is probably our best outcome there, as we get to Rock Slide to hit Sarah Ledge for a lot of damage and chip Decidueye just a tiny bit, but Orangaru gets up our Trick Room, and we Sucker Punch Sarah Ledge to take them out, since they could have been Shadow Sneak. Uh, and the Psy Shock does crit Decidueye, but... Uh, it doesn't quite kill Decidueye, so Decidueye still gets to live on 2%. And now you just get to Dragon Pulse Skeleturge for some damage, and then Psy Shock the Decidueye again. And since the Decidueye didn't Sucker Punch on the previous turn, I felt pretty safe just going for the Psy Shock into it this turn. And Skeleturge is starting to get built up, but the opponent just decides to quit here. I'm not quite sure why. If I had to guess, they either have Ursaluna in the back, and our Exeggutor is definitely slower than their Ursaluna since we're mid-speed, and our mid-speed Exeggutor can never be faster than their Ursaluna, so even if they protected for one turn, we have two turns of Trick Room left. Or they just had Sneasler in the back, and Oranguru could just click the Psyshock into the Sneasler in order to get rid of it. So, like, it's perfectly possible that they could have, like, had slack off on Skeleturge, and maybe they just didn't feel like playing out the rest of the game at that point, because I think slack off on Skeleturge might just win us the game. I can't remember what else we had in the back. I think it was Leafeon in the back for whenever the Trick Room ends. So we could knock off the Skeleturge there, and then we have the Sash to get another knockoff into it. Or we could Sword Stance first and then knock off into the Skeleturge. Actually, no, you can't, because Skeleturge is unaware. But suffice to say, I think this game ended a little bit too early before we could have gotten to see what happens. Then again, if the back to the Skeleturge having Slack off, we could just use a Rock Root to taunt the Skeleturge to make it so that it can't Slack off. So, I, again, I do feel pretty like we had this end game pretty wrapped up here here we got another hisuian typhlosion team but they also have trick room elements in Furgraph and blood moon and then palafin swapping out and coming back in is probably fine for like everything on our team except for like florges and pseudo wudo so we get to lead Leafeon and Sudowoodoo here, and they decide to lead Whimsicott and Typhlosion, which is absolutely marvelous for us. They are Frisk on their Typhlosion, so they get to see our items, but we protect Leafeon in this first turn as they set up the Tailwind, and of course Sudowoodoo is going to take the Eruption, and even if it couldn't, it has Sturdy. So we get good Rock Slide damage into both Pokemon, and they go for Sunny Day, but we just get to Sucker Punch into Typhlosion in order to take it out. And even if they were Terra Fire, we would use Knock Off with Leafeon, since Leafeon should be faster or speed tying with the Hisuian Typhlosion since they activated the Sunny Day. It would depend on if they were Scarf or not on Typhlosion, but the way that they were playing, I'd be willing to more bet that they were probably Specs. But the Typhlosion at that point was locked into Eruption, and it wasn't going to do very much damage with its Eruption anyways, so they would get to probably break Leafy on Sash, but... The Pokemon that they have in the back really struggle to threaten Leafeon while the sun is up because we can just Solar Blade into them. Up next, we got a rain team, but this rain team is a little bit difficult because they have the Murkrow, which means that they can set up the priority rain. So even if we had the ability to get Torkoal in under Trick Room, they can just use Murkrow in order to get rid of our rain super quickly. And with their two water type mons, it's kind of hard to position Torkoal correctly here. 
as well as they just have two really good steel types in the King Gambit and the Arcaladon. So they decide to lead Murkrow and Basket Legion, and we lead Torkoal and Aranguru specifically because I wanted them to set rain with Murkrow on this turn and then attack with Basket Legion. So uh, we swap into Exeggutor here, and then we Terra Water our Aranguru so that we can get the Trick Room up. But they actually decide to flip turn instead of like wave crashing or anything with the Aranguru, so they get to bring in King Gambit here, and the Trick Room goes up with a. Aranguru, and they decide to taunt Aranguru, but Aranguru is a uh, mental herb, so that doesn't affect us for one turn. And I tried to taunt into King Gambit, but Aranguru is not the slowest that it can be, or at least this King Gambit is slower than Aranguru. Actually, let me check that in Team Builder. Okay, yeah, I just checked it in Team Builder, and our Aranguru is not the slowest that it can be, so this King Gambit might very well just be like neutral speed investment and still just be slower than Aranguru. So that is a bit of a mistake on this team that I now have fixed on the team sheet for later, but it's good that reviewing this battle made me see that uh, Aranguru's uh, speed IV needed to be changed. But we're trying to get rid of Murkrow here so that we can bring Torkoal back in for Sun, but I, with the King Gambit doing the uh, sword dancing, I figured it was going to Sucker Punch, but it actually Kowtow Cleaves, which is really unfortunate there because we really needed our health on Torkoal in order to body press into King Gambit. And my reason for the double switch was even if they decide to like sucker punch into Torkoal on the turn after this, we could use Rock Slide with Torkoal to make it so that Murkrow cannot set up the rain again. But the fact that they decided to Kowtow Cleave into the Exeggutor slot on this turn definitely hurt us a lot because we could have Dragon Pulsed into Murkrow again in order to get rid of it and then they would have taken out our Exeggutor probably, but then we get Torkoal in at full health and the sun up and they can't reset our sun anymore. So they decide to Sucker Punch into Sudowoodo and they set up the rain here and I try yawning into King Gambit and then stomping tantruming into it and I think that is also the wrong play as I should have just body pressed into it as I was expecting them to sucker the Torkoal since the Torkoal was the one that was on low health but uh, the yawn ended up just being kind of pointless there because they swapped out King Gambit so they at least get rid of the attack boost and we get to body press into a ghost type which is not great but the rock slide is going to KO Murkrow so if we can get Torkoal out and then bring it back in we can regain weather control but it's kind of too late in the game to be worrying about weather control so I just let Torkoal down here to the sucker punch and we get to sucker punch there Basky Legion and I'm not sure if that crit mattered I, we'd have to calc it but not my job here um, they fake out into a Rangaroo, and I decided to protect with Sudowoodo here, and I taunted into King Gambit since I knew that Aranguru was faster. I didn't want King Gambit getting its sword stance back up on this turn, but that would have been like a decent turn for us to attack into Sneasler, and I think this is another play that I don't think about. It's just using the Psy Shock to attack into Sneasler in order to bring it down to its Sash. But we go for the double protect with Sudowoodo, and Sudowoodo actually gets the double protect, which I don't know if it's actually great that that happens because we could have gotten a free swap into Exeggutor here and I go for the Trick Room with Aranguru which the Trick Room doesn't really matter at this point because the suit because the King Gambit can just sucker punch everything that we have left at this point so again I think I should have just attacked into Sneasler because now we're proccing its sash as you'll see but it gets to Dark Claw into Aranguru, take out Aranguru here, and now it's just the Exeggutor left as they Sucker Punch Exeggutor, but Exeggutor takes it okay, and we get the Berry to proc, which means we can take another Sucker Punch as King Gambit's taunt ends, and they go for this Sword Stance here, and I thought that they would Sucker Punch again, so I went for the Trick Room, and now the Trick Room is over, they just they just get to Kowtow Cleave into the Exeggutor, because the reason I Trick Roomed was that I wanted to stall turns, not only for them to not do anything, to maybe try and stall out their Sucker Punches overall, but I also wanted our Harvest to proc, so that way if they Sucker Punch us again, there would be a better chance for us to live, but but they fall and just decide to Sword Stance on the first turn that they're able to Sword Stance, which makes perfect sense for them. So I don't think my play... I think this team had the ability to beat this team, despite all of the really hard counters they had to a lot of our stuff. I think that some of the plays just didn't go in my favor, but I also think that there were some plays that I made that were just bad plays in this game. Lastly, we have a bit of an Ndidi side spam team, but they also have Reelaboom, so their two terrains are kind of colliding with each other, and I'm not really quite sure what to think about this team. Like, all the Pokemon on this team are good, I just don't really see the vision on how they work together, except for, like, Sneasler with Unburden for one of the two terrains. 
Uh, they immediately lead Salamence and Skeezler, and we lead Orangaroo and Torkoal, since they don't have any weather, we might as well uh, get our weather up with Torkoal right away. And they decide to close combat into Orangaroo, which lowers Sneezler's special defense, and they get the Poison Touch, and they double the Orangaroo slot to keep us from getting up Trick Room. But the Heat Wave unfortunately does not hit the Sneezler, which is the big one we wanted it to hit, and uh, just doesn't do very much damage to Salamence. But now we get Exeggutor in, and Ndidi comes in, and I decided to Terra Poison Exeggutor here as Sneezler protects. And the Sludge Bomb does crit the Ndidi, but as long as our Heat Wave landed on the Ndidi, I think it would have taken out that slot anyways. Now they get to bring back in the Salamence here, and the opponent just decides to forfeit, maybe because... Like, I would have swapped out Exeggutor for Florges, who I know we had in the back here, and then used the Torkoal in order to try and Heatwave into both slots to mostly just try and get rid of Sneasler and maybe get a lucky burn at this point since we already missed one Heatwave on the Sneasler, and the Exeggutor Dragon Pulsing in the Salamence would have taken it out, and if the Salamence decided to Draco Meteor into the Torkoal slot, then its special attack would be down, and they have one Pokemon in the back that if it was maybe King Gambit, then we would be in a pretty bit of a tricky spot but from the opponent, opponent's perspective this game was over which I'm not exactly sure why but we can only speculate on why the opponent decided to quit but I mean Exeggutor being Terra Poison means that we could probably have even gotten up the Trick Room again if we really wanted to and I think if we get up the Trick Room with Exeggutor and then we get rid of the Sneasler on this turn and the Salamence goes for Draco Meteor then I think think we would have been fine no matter what they had in the back. So yeah, that was the Touching Grass team, and I, there's a lot of Chlorophyllmons in the game, and I don't think Leafeon is the best Chlorophyllmon, however it is nice to have like a just a strong physical grass type that's not Hisuian Lilligant, since Hisuian Lilligant feels like it kind of has to go for Sleep Powder after you things with Torkoal, but Leafeon operates a little bit more independently since it gets like the knockoff and can get rid of some opposing items, so it has its own little niche carved out for it, and Every single one of those, these Pokemon has like a little niche carved out for it, except maybe a little bit less pseudo wudo but I think it's still fun to play all these mons regardless. But thank you guys so much for watching, if you liked it, maybe consider leaving a like on the video, and even consider subscribing because both of those things would help me out an absolute ton, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.